is what we call our R&D facility. So uh, I'm just going to go down here and hopefully not fall in. That's always something worth avoiding. And I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just really stir this up to make sure it's... As Don't catch any fish. Yeah, there's some nice carp in here, so, uh, but the filter will take those out as well. You know, oh, there we go. Vile's disease. Yeah, take all of that out. Those are huge bacteria, so uh, look at that. You've got a good picture of that. That's properly dirty. <sighs> water, ev water everywhere. Yeah. And a drop to drink. Yeah, they have a drop to drink, so we just put that in there. Making sure we get all the dirty bits in there. Tell me this is not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, here you go. Did you get a cup? Yeah, I've got a cup here, so I'm going to fill this up. So the first thing you'd have to do, after you've filled it up, put a little bit of pressure in. Just easy that. Kids can do this, so it's really easy. And off you go. And the nano screen has already filtered out everything, including... Well, it does it as you... As cholera. You yeah, everything. Cholera. Everything. Polio, hepatitis. Could polio, could these diseases be in this water here now? Well, they could what? be, yes, but uh, they're not in this glass of water and all. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So proud. Taste, it doesn't exactly taste like Essex water. It tastes better than Essex water. <laughs> Beautiful water. It tastes like lifesaver water. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> My name is Ashton Hunt, I'm the Managing Director of Lifesaver Systems. We're here to talk about uh, the Lifesaver Jerry Can and the work that we're doing right now with the uh, Department for International Development down in the Philippines, uh, helping up those people in the aftermath of the, uh, the terrible typhoon that's just happened a week ago. And this is... Introduce this, me to him. So this is the Lifesaver Jerry Can. It's a fantastic piece of technology because it's so easy to use. Really simple. The way this works, what we've got here, there's only one place you can put the water in. So here I've got some really dirty, revolting water. I'm Let me just in. test it. It looks revolting. Yeah, that's come from our pond just outside. So it's really full of all the nasties and the sort of thing that from a, uh, from a disaster point of view, this is the sort of thing that people have to drink raw. You know, otherwise they've got nothing else to drink. So we put all the dirty bits in there, make sure it's really in there. And it's as easy as this. You screw in the pump. You give it a few pumps. Really straightforward. Now, what does the pumping do? So that puts a bit of air pressure into the vessel there. So right in the, in the middle of here now, you've got 18 and a half litres of water and a bit of air pressure. And what that's going to do, when I open the tap here, is create a pressure differential. It's going to move the water through the nanotechnology membranes that we've got here, and it's going to come out as sterile, clean drinking water. And it happens so quickly. Now, these are nanopores. So a, nano, a nanometer is one thousand, one thousand, thousandth of a millimeter. So really tiny. And the smallest living organism is 23 uh, nanometers in diameter, which is the polio virus. And our whole size are... 15 nanometers. So quite simply, anything bigger than 15 nanometers, which is everything, can't get through the holes. So all you have to do, having pressurized it, is turn the tap, and out comes absolutely sterile drinking water. And you can see how fast it flows. Oop, get you in there. So there you go, cheers. Good health. Now the other thing about this, and this is one of the things that the aid agencies really like. Because it flows so quickly, we can actually do this now with a shower attachment. Because what you've got is a situation when people are in disaster response, uh, in disaster environments, where you've got a situation where, yes, you can get them a drink, but what you also need to do is give them the hygiene factors. And people don't like washing in dirty water. It gives them eye infections, skin infections. It's really not nice at all. So, with the, uh, with the Lifesaver Jerry Can, you can give them a nice, clean, sterile shower. You know, and when you're in, the, you're in tough times, everybody likes a nice, clean shower. Presumably, in a hot country, that would come out nice and warm as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, nice and refreshing. So, in terms of morale for the people who are, you know, in such desperate, desperate situations, great drink and a nice, clean shower, it does the world for them in terms of lifting morale and uh, make them feel good. And because it's so easy to use, it allows people the comfort of not worrying about water. 
what they've got then is the ability to worry about all the other things that they've got. Food, shelter, looking after their family, looking after their loved, one, loved ones, getting medicine, water. A life essential is not a problem. Every home should have one. Every boat should have one. Every aeroplane should have one. Yeah. Every country threatened yeah. with disasters, living in the earthquake zones yeah. and the tornado zones and the typhoon zones should have one. Yeah, we like to call it disaster resilience. So what we're working to do, and we're working with the aid agencies and with the British government, is to get these in the hands of people, particularly in somewhere like the Philippines, where they've had 20 typhoons so far this year. This is the biggest one. So it's not about if the next typhoon's gonna happen, it's when. And what we want is people to be using these every day, because they need them every day. They don't always have access to clean drinking water in some of these rural, remote areas. And that when uh, a natural disaster strikes, be it, a, be it the next typhoon or an earthquake, as they've recently had, the families have got 20,000 litres of clean, sterile drinking water in their hand. And it's called disaster resilience, and it's about being pre-prepared for the inevitable. It's fantastic. This is for that first week? No. This, this is, is for that first week, though, that where nothing is happening, yeah. where no one is coming to your aid. That's right. When you need at least how many days will it supply a family of five for? Well, because 20,000 litres is a lot of water, that's 20 tonnes of water. So actually it's not just for the first day or even the first week. This will actually last a family of four or five about three or four years. So if you look at the Philippines, it's such a big disaster. Hang on, you only need one in a village to keep a village going, how many people going for a week, that vital week before yeah, well, something happens? You can do that, but the thing is, what you want to try and avoid is, is having conflict over water. So if you only have one in the village, you're gonna have people having to queue up and fight for when they get their, their water. So the best situation is to give each family a unit because it's theirs, it looks after them if, and they look after it. And that's by far the best way to give um, clean drinking water for a prolonged period. In the Philippines, it's going to take two or three years to get the standard infrastructure, the normal pipe work and such like, up and running again. So in this box for a family, you've got 20,000 litres. That's two or three years at least of clean, safe, sterile drinking water for a family unit. Hang on a minute. There are certain parts of the world where you don't have to have a disaster yeah. to need this piece of kit. Yeah, absolutely. This is a lifesaver for the three quarters of the world at the below the poverty line. Yeah, absolutely. We distribute this all over the world. The Lifesaver Jerry Can, along with our other products, the C2, which is a, uh, a big 750 litre tank that does two million litres of water. Uh, we distribute those all over the world for the 1.1 billion people who don't have access to clean drinking water every day. Every day they're drinking dirty, contaminated water that they're sharing with animals and you know, it's disgusting and, and they get sick and there's a high level of child mortality rate. So over a million children every year die from water related illness, diarrhea and sickness. You know, so this product in the hands of families every day gives them that level of comfort and assurance and health that uh, we benefit from in developed countries that we absolutely know makes a massive difference out there in developing countries. Tell me, who was the genius who thought about this and why hasn't he or she been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize? <laughs> well, the genius behind this is a friend of mine called Michael Pritchard. Michael actually was inspired to invent the Lifesaver technology out of the Asian tsunami way back then in, in uh, Christmas 2004. That was his inspiration, but it took a little while for him to develop the technology and we launched the company in 2007. And he is a clever fellow, and we, we have a great company here and, and a very proud workforce who understand the importance of what they're doing and the, and the products that they're delivering, the impact that they have on the people who are using them. And it's great that Michael this year was, uh, was awarded the MBE, which is fantastic and, and, and well-deserved acclaim for the work that he's done and continues to do. But the Nobel Peace Prize, well, you know, watch this space. So this is the Lifesaver bottle. This is actually the first product that Michael invented. Um, and really this is for personal water security. So this is for, uh, we sell these typically to campers and hikers and people traveling around the world. You know, everyday people who worried about uh, traveling, worried about the quality of the water that they're gonna be faced with. 
and this is, this is the product for them. So all of us in the business, we have them, we, we don't travel without them. It's fantastic. It will absolutely guarantee safe, sterile drinking water. And if it gives you any comfort as to how good this is, we've been supplying this to the British Army. So all of our troops in, Af in Afghanistan for the last four years, this has been standard issue kit and they love it. They love it. And not a single day's illness? No. They absolutely love it. It keeps the troops on the front line, it keeps them where they want to be, doing the job that they're paid to do. And, uh, you know, that's the lifesaver bottle. We never had one back. They absolutely love it. Never have to go back to base no, for a drink? No, exactly. One of the problems that the uh, military have is carrying enough water. So what we have with the lifesaver bottle, which does 4,000 litres of water. So 4,000 litres of water. So one of our soldiers is carrying, in effect, more water than they can drink in a year. So that gives them the chance to go out there and, and deploy on the front line, knowing that they're safe, protected, hydrated, and not, importantly, carrying five or six kilograms of water. These ones, you were saying you don't have to keep carrying... Oh yeah, so these, the soldiers absolutely love, because without these, they have to carry water. Water's one kilogram for each litre. So typically for a day, particularly when you're carrying heavy kit, they carry about four or five litres of water. That's four or five kilograms extra that they carry. Now with a Lifesaver bottle here, they don't need to do that. They maybe carry one litre in their, in their backpack just to get them going, but they can scavenge from, from streams, from ponds, from wells, where previously they couldn't uh, touch that water because it would make them sick. Now with the Lifesaver bottle, they can access that water. It's nice and cool, it's refreshing, keeps them hydrated and is absolutely loved by them. My mind is turning over, so if somebody were to poison water, could it be protected against poison? Well, it depends how they poison it, but typically if they're going to use chemical poisoning, then no it won't, because what this is doing is creating a physical barrier that stops anything in suspension in the water from passing through the barrier. So a chemical uh, pollutant actually goes into solution and therefore the bottle won't really uh, cope with that and it's not designed to cope with that. We're looking at microbial contamination typically where, as, you, as, we, as we know, it's dirt, it's, it's uh, bacteria, it's cysts and particularly for our product, it's virus. A lot of products out there don't cope with viruses. Uh, so this takes everything out there and makes it absolutely sterile. So what about nuclear and biological warfare? Could it could you, is the next invention one that you could drink post Armageddon? Well, who knows? I mean, at the end of the day, what this bottle will address, what all of our products will address, is the 99.9% .9 of people out there who have access to a quantity of water, but don't have an access to a quality of water. So there's a lot of surface water out there. People live by lakes and rivers and streams and ponds. And all too often, those billion people out there who, who the world talks about who don't have access to clean drinking water, they have access to water, and with one of these, they then have access to clean drinking water because it's instant, safe, set, sterile, clean drinking water through a Lifesaver bottle, the jerry can, the cube, or the C2. How many lifeboats have got one? Ah, good question. Everybody asks the question about seawater. It doesn't desalinate seawater. So in a lifeboat, if you're looking to use one of these to drink the sea, uh, it will make it sterile, but it'll still taste like seawater, so it won't be pretty uh, very good for you. But uh, you know, people always ask that question. It's the first question everybody asks, so it's a good one. <laughs> okay, so I'm in a lifeboat, and I decide to urinate into it. Will it make it less salty, or is it the same problem there? It's going to be the same problem, because actually urine has got uh, um, uh, a lot of salt in solution there. So what it'll do for you is create sterile urine. Uh, if you want to drink it, that's your choice. If you have to drink it, maybe you don't have a choice, but uh, at least you know it's sterile. I don't mean to take the piss, but have you experimented? Has anybody experimented with urine? Uh, to taste it? Yes, every now and again we get people who, uh, who write into us or phone in and say, look, you know, I've put strange things through here, urine being one of them. We get people who put wine through it, um, which actually if you've got pretty rough red wine, then putting it through the bottle will improve it because it takes out all the tannins and things like that. So it's quite good for that, but you know, you wouldn't necessarily want to, uh, to put your beer through it or anything like that. So better off drinking those straight. <laughs> What's the strangest thing you've drunk through it? Or do you have a a king's wine taster. <laughs> no, I mean, you can put vodka through it. That'll uh, improve the quality of your vodka. So uh, make it really nice and neat and uh, sterile. So if you want nice, clean vodka, then it's good to go through there. Can you go purer than tap water? Well, tap water is actually really, really good quality. And, uh, you know, we're very lucky in this country that actually 
being able to simply turn the tap and get a refreshing drink of water is something that uh, you know we take for granted and, and it's only when you travel away from uh, developed countries like the UK into places where you can't turn a tap that you realize how lucky we are but you know when you've got a product that turns any water instantly into clean water that flows as fast as our domestic tap you know it's one of the things we really pride ourselves on is believing that no matter what your circumstances are you should be able to get a drink and you shouldn't have to wait for it you shouldn't have to plan ahead you shouldn't have to wait for it to drip out of a gravity filter you just want to drink so you put the dirty water in and you get clean sterile drinking water out the back of it I, I'm astounded I mean why hasn't it been invented before is there nothing like it is there a simpler version that didn't quite work well is it completely copyright unique uh, this is absolutely patented technology. It is unique. It's not the only water filter in the world, but it's the one that really works because it has so many attributes that work for the audience, uh, for, the, for the users who are going to use it. So, you know, what people want is the ability to turn the water that surrounds them, lakes, rivers, streams, ponds, puddles, the rain. They want to turn that into safe, sterile drinking water. They don't want to store it. Storing dirty water, particularly in hostile environments, storing clean water, sorry, in particularly hostile environments is impossible. So we store everything dirty and we can do that because we turn it into safe, safe sterile drinking water so quickly, we can store it dirty. You can't contaminate dirty water, it is contaminated. So we store it dirty, this is full of dirty water here, and to turn it into clean drinking water, it's just a few pumps, you know, and open the top and out comes... Here we go. Can I have some water, please? Yeah, here we go. Safe, sterile drinking water. Lovely. Cheers. Chateau 2013. <laughs> it's a good year. There you go. So it's so as easy as that. You must keep one in the back of the car. Always. Always. Why? Well, you never know. I mean, it, strangest of things, you can get stuck on a motorway. You know, two or three hours there, we've got no water. If you've got a stream next to you or even a puddle, you can just fill up the bottle, have a safe, clean sterile, healthy drinking of, drink of water through the Lifesaver bottle. So, you know, everybody in the business always travels with one. It doesn't matter whether we're coming out of Essex and going down to London, or we're going out of Essex and going over to Malaysia, or the Philippines, Indonesia, Central South America. We travel all over the place and we always take the Lifesaver bottle with us. There's going to come a point, because you're hoping to deal with millions, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. That it could bring the price down yeah. to more affordable. Yeah. You, you could have the potential for a million, billions of people here with these ones. What can you see the price breaking down to eventually? And will you be getting a mass production line somewhere because of all these continuing bad, bad disasters that yeah. seem to be piling one up on another? Yeah, it's, a re it's really important to, to look ahead as a business. And, uh, you know, we're the size we are for the, for the uh, sales that we have today. We have a fantastic workforce here who are capable of delivering thousands of these products every week. Um, and as regards to the future, you know, well, at the moment, the people who are most in need of these, be they in a disaster situation or those people who every day don't have access to clean drinking water, we have to work with partner organisations, typically things like governments, uh, non-government organisations, charities and such like, who provide the funding and the logistics to get the product out there and give it away for free. But as the product develops and we, we take cost out of it, um, you know, we see, a, we see a model where people can buy their own product and make sure that for their own needs that they've got access to clean, safe, sterile drinking water th through the uh, Lifesaver product. Well, this is the Lifesaver Q. We, uh, we actually designed this in con conjunction with Oxfam, who are great friends and partners of ours. Uh, now, the thing about the Q, this is really designed specifically for disaster response. It's much smaller than the jerry can, and the reason for that is that we can get a lot of these fellas on a pallet. So typically we get 180 uh, Lifesaver cubes on a standard pallet. Now 180 Lifesaver cubes, it does 5,000 litres of water, this cube. So on a standard pallet, that's the equivalent of 900,000 litres of water. So you imagine the problems and the logistics of transporting 900,000 litre bottles of water around the world. You can't even think about it. It's just logistically a nightmare. So one pallet of Lifesaver cubes, 900,000 litre bottles of water, this is the answer to, uh, to getting water, safe sterile drinking water, to people in disaster situations fast. 
Tell me about your involvement with the Philippines, a disaster waiting to happen. Were you, was Mr. Pritchard prepared for this? Was he stocking up a barn here full of them yeah. for the yeah. next disaster? Yeah, we work very closely in conjunction with the Department for International Development. Um, they have a facility called the Rapid Response Fund, which, uh, which they triggered last weekend in response to the uh, catastrophe down in the Philippines. And what they've done this week is buy everything that we've got in the warehouse. So we've, uh, we've got over two and a half thousand products that are going down to the Philippines on a plane right now and will be uh, dished out by uh, Oxfam and our other partners down there over the course of the weekend and the coming days. We've got cubes out there, we've got Lifesaver jerry cans and uh, right now en route are two Lifesaver C2s which will uh, look after communities with two million litres of uh, clean drinking water. How can you guarantee that this won't become a black market product, that this won't be hijacked by those working for the authorities? Well, we hope that won't happen. Uh, at the end of the day, we're working with the world's best NGOs. We're working with the British government, UK aid. You know, we absolutely believe in the partnerships that we've created there, that they'll go through to the people who are most desperately in need. And you know, the thing that we found working in places like Haiti and northern Pakistan is that these really work and that when you give them to people, they don't let go of them easily. So, you know, we think that uh, this will really have the, uh, the necessary benefit and impact down there in the Philippines and really look after a lot of people and save a lot of lives. It's all about life saving. Yeah. Let me just get, get this guy through. You call it, it's a pass through. It's called the Lifesaver product. Is that because it does what it says on the can? Yeah, it genuinely saves life. Uh, because in a disaster situation such as the Philippines, the first thing people look for is uh, have they got enough air? After air, you know, you can last three minutes without air. But what you're looking for after that is water, because you can last three days without water, last three weeks without food. So it really is that critical element. You get people safe drinking water, it's one of those life, it is the life essential after air that means that they are relaxed about their water that they've got, they're relaxed about their health, and they're relaxed about the things about, you know, disease and, uh, and death that is associated with waterborne diseases such as cholera and dysentery, you know, they've got other things to worry about. You give them the means to clean the water around them and absolutely assure them it's guaranteed sterile. They can go and rebuild their lives, rebuild their houses and look after their, their loved ones. Is the next change, it comes out with vitamin packed water? <laughs> There's not much better than just water, you know, and in situations like that, everyday needs and in, in cases of disasters like the Philippines, people just want water. They don't care what it tastes like as long as it tastes fresh and clean. They don't need it to taste like orange or black currant. They just want water. They need water, otherwise tragically they'll die. What about the Haitians? Have they been forgotten? No, Haitians have not been forgotten. Um, we distributed a large consignment of product out there and we still keep in touch with them. And actually, you know, four and a half years later, they're still using the Lifesaver jerry cans. They still love them. It still brings them clean, safe drinking water every day. It's a fantastic product that has real longevity out there. Well, if you've got one in your car, yeah. you can't blame them for keeping it as a life-saving product. <laughs> Quite right. I mean, it's, it's so simple. I mean, one of the things that makes this such a different product is it's really that simple. There isn't an instruction manual because it's intuitive. There isn't an instruction manual because you don't need to do any clever sort of uh, maintenance programs through the life of the, of the product. It just keeps working. And when, it, when, it's, uh, when it's reached the end of its life, we have something called fail-safe fail technology. That means that when the filter stops working, it actually stops working. No water will pass through this product uh, at the end of its life. It will not pass water. So the users know that when it's passing clean water, it's passing safe, clean, sterile drinking water that's good for them, it's going to keep them, al keep them alive. So to quote a phrase, it really has been passed by the management. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come back from Brussels where they have the uh, ADEX, which is the world's largest uh, aid fair. So all the major NGOs go there and we've been uh, demonstrating the Lifesaver jerry can and the products, uh, the cube, for the last two days. So I've been drinking some really pretty horrid Brussels pond water for two days and look, here I am. The, uh, the picture of health and fitness. <laughs>
<laughs> so you've been demonstrating and drinking yeah. it, and, and, and obviously you're, you're worried now, wherever you go, even the hotel water has to come through, yeah? Absolutely, you know, there's nothing better than a glass of Lifesaver water, even in the, in the best five-star hotels. Not that we stayed there, that'll be the nice when that happens, but uh, no, it's great in Brussels. We had a really good response from the, uh, the humanitarian world over there. They love what we do because we do it better than anybody else so quickly and so you've easily. got the i won't say perfect backdrop but was the filipino dis, uh, disaster then uh, yes it was so we, you know all the agencies who were there they had people in brussels but they also had a lot of people now down in the philippines so we were getting information relayed back from the philippines uh via the people at the show just talking to us about you know what we can do how it's going to help their people because what's also important in a, in a disaster situation is you've got to think about the people who are helping those who are in need so we've got bottles now that are going out with save the children for their people to make sure that their workers are healthy and hydrated so that they can be absolutely best impact helping people in, in need out there as well so the product is for everybody really because everybody needs clean safe sterile, sterile drinking water Everybody needs, needs a lifesaver. Everyone needs a lifesaver. There's a great strap line. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we actually have a, uh, the ability to take donations if people are really interested in, in, uh, in donating the lifesaver jerry can down into the Philippines. Uh, people have very kindly started donating money through our website, which is www.lifesaversystems.com and there's a donate now function on there and what we're doing as a company is fund matching that so every pound that we receive we're putting a pound in and we're putting together the product that we're going to send down and distribute through our uh, charity partners down in the philippines to uh, bring li lifesaver jerry cans to the people in distress down in the philippines it's a miracle <laughs> invention it's a miracle there's invention. no other word for it yeah yeah